Okay, I guess there is a little bit of bad news. I said there is no bad news. But the little bit of bad news is that, unfortunately, it's impossible to solve most differential equations in the sense of obtaining an explicit formula for the solution. So we've spent, like, two or three days solving differential equations. But I've given you specific ones that, are able to, that you're able to solve. There's a whole class in, in college called differential equations, um, and that opens the door to solving more of them but there's still a whole bunch of them out there that are just flat out impossible to solve. So what we're going to have to do is go to approximating some solutions for some of them. And there are two ways to do that. One is slope fields and one is something called Euler's method, um, which we're going to talk about on Monday. Um, so anyway, <laughs> the um, so let's say that we've got, and this is what we did last year. It says, sketch the graph of the solution of the initial value problem dy dx equals x plus y. That initial value just means that they tell you that when x is 0, y equals a specific number. Um, if we can't find the formula for the solution, then how can we possibly sketch its graph? Because there's no way to separate your variables on dy dx equals x plus y. Because the first thing that you would do is multiply both sides by dx. And then you'd have to distribute that dx through the x plus y. So there, it's impossible to separate that. So dx times x times the third term will be x plus the y. And then you would subtract it from y as the y and the dx. So the only differential equations that we know how to solve and that we're going to learn this year are separable ones and we can't separate that. Well, we can think about what a differential equation means. And the differential equation is a representative of what? The slope. Very good. So the slope at any point on the graph is going to be equal to what? x plus y. Very good. And this is what we did last year. So sketch the slope field at the following points. So like at the point 0, 0. If x is 0 and y is 0, what's the slope? Zero. 0. And so we just draw a little horizontal bar. All right. At the point 0, 1, what would the slope be? 1. one. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, but your slopes need to be accurate in relationship to your other slopes. At the point 0, 2, what would the slope be? Two, so it needs to be steeper than your slope of one. This is really hard with the air slate, by the way. Um, okay, go ahead and finish off what the slope field would look like at all of these points. It is kind of weird. Okay, so this is supposed to be a slope of negative one. This is supposed to be a slope of negative 1 right here. That's supposed to be a slope of negative 2. 1, 2, and then 3. All right, the next question says to sketch the solution curve through the point 0, 1 by following the slope field. I'm going to switch colors here just so you can see it. Okay, so the point 0, 1 is right here. So I basically just want to sketch this graph by following the slope field. So at that point, I'm going to have a slope of negative 1. And my graph is going up as I go to the right. So what will happen to my slopes, do you think? Will it increase or decrease? It's going to kind of increase and go up like that. And then as I go to the left, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's going to kind of hit 0, but then it's going to go back up like this. You're going to have a lot of practice on this, and it just kind of takes practice and takes seeing some examples. What you don't want to ever do um, 
is like you wouldn't want to draw the graph like this. this specifically right here because I've got my slope of 1 right here, but right here, this slope right here is telling me that I need to be steeper. Number 2. Okay, on number two, we're actually going to use your calculator. Very rare, and I just want to show this to you because you can check your answers on your calculator. I've never seen them give you a slope field equation where you're actually able to use your calculator, but this is just kind of extra information for you. Um, given that di dt equals 15 minus 3i, the first thing you're going to need to do is go to mode. And the very first thing on mode is up here at the top is uh, graph. And right now we're in function mode. Right arrow. And we're going to change it to differential equations mode. And make sure you hit enter twice. All right, now go to y equals. We went to mode, and then on graph we right arrowed over to... Um, differential equations. Okay, now notice that you have y1 prime here. So your y equals looks a little bit different. Okay, what we are trying to enter in here is, and I probably should have used x's and y's here because that would have been a little bit easier. Um, we're doing i's and t's. Which one is your dependent variable here? Dependent. I. Okay, so I is kind of like your Y. And then DT or T would be your independent variable. Um, I actually already have, this is the only time I ever use, we really ever use the calculator on this. This was left over from last year. Now, the weird thing about entering this in here is that instead of Y in differential equation mode, you have to do Y1. So you literally do 15 minus 3 and then Y and then 1. Uh, yes, and in this case, the y1 is the i, or our dependent variable. All right, we want to set the window, and so go to your window. What? Well, in this, uh, number two, for that equation, i is your dependent variable, and by default, because of the way that the calculator is set up, they're calling the dependent variable y1, so you have to use y1 for the dependent variable. Okay, so for our window, we want to set x between negative 1 and 5, and you can see that I've got that right there. Um, the t max and the t step and the t plot shouldn't matter too much, but you can go ahead and set yours the way that I, I have it. So for t max, you can do 10, for t step, 0.1. T plot, I have a zero. Okay, so X min and max is between negative one and five. And then the Y min and max is between negative one and eight. And then we can graph it. Yeah, it's kind of cool watching it graph. Okay, part B is what can you say about the limiting value of the equation? or all solutions will approach what y value. And by all solutions, I mean if you were to draw in your slope field, no matter where you start your slope field, what are all of the solutions, what y value will all of the curves approach? Is it 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Yes. Okay, so y equals 5. All right, so that's how you do it on the calculator. That's really only going to be helpful to you if you're doing your homework and you want to check your answer. Like I said, I can't ever remember a time on the AP exam where they've put a slope field that's on the calculator part of the um, exam. All right, one of the following slope fields is for the differential equation dy dx equals sine x plus y, and the other is for the differential equation dy dx equals sine x minus y. 
we're, our ultimate goal here is to determine which one is which. We're going to match the two. But I've kind of taken you some, taking some leading questions here to make this a little bit easier. Where would you accept the, expect the slope to be zero in the slope field of dy dx equals sine of x plus y? The sine of what is zero? Is zero. So what do we need x plus y to equal? Zero. So we need x plus y to equal zero, or we need for the y value to equal the negative of the x value. So anytime, any point where y is the negative of x value, I should expect to have a slope of zero. Where would you expect the slope to be zero on the other equation? Right, where y equals x, or where that argument x minus y equals zero. So which slope field goes with which differential equation? Let's do the sign x plus y first. So x plus y, y equals negative x needs to equal zero. So is that slope field A or slope field B? Okay, like right here is a slope of zero, right here is a slope of zero, right here is a slope of zero, and then right here, here, and here. And you do have to keep in mind that this is a rectangular calculator screen, so it's not square. So you can see that along the line y equals negative x, you have slopes of zero. So that one is A. And therefore this one would have to be B, but we determined that along the line y equals x, you should have slopes of zero, which sure enough, you do. Right through there. All right, and then part C is, can you determine where pi and negative pi would be on the x-axis in both graphs? Okay. So pi and negative pi, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. If you're talking about pi and negative pi on the x-axis, then y would be 0. So we're looking for the point pi comma 0 and negative pi comma 0. So for this slope field right here, for sine x plus y, um, let's see, we determined that the A was sine x plus y and B was sine x minus y. Is that right? Okay. All right, so for sine x plus y, the point pi comma zero would equal, what would the slope be? It would, the slope would be zero, right, because I would have the sine. So for graph A, it would be the sine of pi and the sine of pi equals zero. So where on the x-axis do I have a slope of zero? It'd be about right here. Because you can see your zero slopes coming down like that. And so this would be pi right here, and negative pi would be right there. Okay. If I'm looking for pi on the x-axis, then that would be the point pi comma zero. So if I want to find the slope at the point pi comma zero, then for the sine of x plus y graph, that would be the slope would be the sine of pi plus zero or the sine of pi. And that value equals zero. So that's why I'm looking for where the slope is zero. Okay. And then for graph B, the slope would be the sine of pi plus zero, or sorry, pi minus zero, which is still zero. So that's where pi would be, and that's where negative pi would be. Just kind of a different way to think about that graph.